Hi, my name's Rob Jordan. I'm a physical therapist. Uh, this is my patient, Sean Simons, for the day. Um, we're posting this video in response to a question that was posted on our site following another video that we posted. And I thought it was such a great question because it comes up all the time. And that question was, can you use your hands to push a herniated disc back into place? And I, first of all, um, I wanted to get clear that there are some professions that that claim to be able to manipulate discs or manipulate spinal joints in such a way as to relocate um, herniated discs. And the fact is that's just simply not true. There, there is no such thing as a slipped disc. There's no such thing as your spine being out of alignment. There's no such thing as making adjustments to the spine. It just simply does not occur anatomically. So um, the question about a herniated disc I thought was very, very good because um, it's a very, very common occurrence. Uh, scientific studies show that up to 80% of the population at one time in their life has a bulging disc or a herniated disc. Now the difference between a bulging disc and a herniated disc is that a bulging disc is simply when the material inside the disc starts to push out through the tougher, tough outer rings of the disc. The disc is made something like a jelly donut with a tough outer rings and a um, kind of a fluid filled core and a bulging disc is when the outer rings get developed cracks and the jelly inside starts to push through those outer rings and it presses on the nerves which cause pain to go into the legs or arms. In this, in most cases we're talking about the lower back and they, and the person might develop pain down into the leg. Now a herniated disc is when the jelly inside the disc actually blows out through the rings of, of the disc and actually it, you've, you've completely lost containment of the jelly and in those cases typically the pain in the leg will go be below the knee. So the bad news is if you're having pain below the knee the chances are you may have to have a surgical intervention to correct that. If you're having pain above the knee or into the back, then we might be able to handle that through physical therapy. So I wanted to show three very, very simple exercises um, to help to promote uh, the recovery from a bulging disc, and that is where the material is just pushing on the nerve. The first exercise, Sean is actually already doing right now. If you've been diagnosed with a bulging disc or even a herniated disc and you want to try to get control of it, laying flat on your stomach is the number one best thing you can do. The first thing I recommend is just simply laying flat on your stomach, maybe propped up on your elbows, or if you're hurting too much, you might even just go flat and lay with your forehead on the backs of your hands. This position allows the muscles in the back to relax and allows the disc material to seep back into the disc where it belongs. The disc is way down below my hand right now, probably an inch and a half to two inches below the surface of the back. So the possibility of you touching it with your hands is, is impossible. So this position allows the muscles to relax and allows the disc material to just simply by gravity fall back into place where it belongs. The nerves are in the back and the disc is in the front. So if the disc falls away from the nerve, it's gonna be putting less pressure on the nerve. Now the next step after three to five or six minutes laying flat on your stomach, you might try propping up on your elbows. So prop up on your elbows for a while. You're doing nothing. You're laying here, you're just allowing the back to curve, allowing the muscle to relax, allowing the, the pressure to be taken off the nerve. Okay? It's very, very simple. There should be no pain involved. If you're doing the right thing, you might actually feel the pain that you once felt in your leg actually start to creep up and be more located in the back. That's a good thing. That's called centralization. And so anytime the pain moves more toward the back and out of the extremities, you must be doing something right. Okay? It's a little bit like if you've got a dirty floor, you start from the edges and you start sweeping it into the middle into a pile where you can get rid of it. And that's what we're trying to do with the pain in this case. Now, we might take next, if he's doing okay with that, we add a little bit of a knee bend. Okay, so he might bend this knee up, stand up on the elbows, bend the left knee up. Nice and slow and controlled. This is engaging the hamstrings relaxing the quadriceps, and it causes the pelvis to tilt a little bit. And that also encourages the disc to sort of fall back into its normal anatomical position and takes pressure off the nerve. 
I normally recommend five to ten repetitions on each leg. Nice and slow, he's breathing, he's relaxing, he's not causing himself any additional pain. Okay, the next step in this progression would be a little bit of a modified push-up. So I want you to put your hands on the floor and now your hips are going to stay on the floor and you're just going to arch your back up and back down. And come back up and back down. And back up and back down. Now this is not uncommon to, for it to hurt your back as far as it causes a little bit of discomfort in the back. Now most people actually say it's a good feeling. It's not a bad feeling, it actually kind of feels good. But again, if the pain is moving out of the leg and into the back, you must be doing the right thing. I normally recommend you know, 10 to 15, even as many as 25 of those repetitions until you feel like you can make that move without much pain. Now, a normal spine should be able to, he should be able to completely extend his arms in front of his body without lifting his hips up off the floor. You might find, if you've been hurting for a long time, that as you come up, your hips actually come up off the floor. That means that you're so tight in the lumbar spine and the muscles that support the, the, the uh, spine and also in the hip flexors that you can't even get up without lit raising the hips up. That means you've got some work to do because this normal backward curve in the lumbar spine is the thing that protects you and that's what makes the back stable and, and able to uh, absorb shock. And so you want to have that normal curve. You want to restore that normal curve. And these exercises are the first step in being able to do that. If you're having this kind of pain and you've been suffering for a long time, I highly recommend you see a physical therapist. They can help you with that. Thanks for your time.